Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. It's good to see no one today. <laughs> All honor to uh, the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua, and his in him lies all salvation. Um, we know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room. Not really. Uh, peace to the saints that <laughs> are watching in. Uh, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go to... Uh, John. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to John Zahar. We're about to read the book. Why don't you relax? Let's go to uh, John chapter 5, verse uh, 26. My glasses are super dirty. It's John chapter 5, verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to him to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Uh huh. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth that they have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That's right. So it's, it's going to be a resurrection of life and a re resurrection of damnation. All right. We talked about in Revelations a couple weeks ago, weeks ago when we were finishing up. They told us about the first resurrection and then the second death. All right. So it's the resurrection of damnation, which is the second death. It's not called a second resurrection. Right. It's called a second death because when the, for that resurrection, you're being resurrected only to die. All right. It's not a resurrection on the life. All right, keep going. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Uh huh. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So listen to what he said. He said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Notice who we talking to. We talking about Yahushua. We know who he is now. We talking about Yahushua, though. Yahushua, who is the truth, right? who is God in the flesh, we look at this man and we know that he, he's a reputable source. But even him, he holds himself to the same standard that he wants us to hold each other to. He said, if I get to run in my mouth about myself, my record can't be trusted. If I'm telling you how great I am, right? Oh, yeah, I'm the truth. He said, my record can't be trusted. You got to have our law tells us how many witnesses? Two or three. You got to have at least two or three witnesses. Watch how you lay them out. He said, me by myself, I can't witness for myself now. He said, my record can't be true. That's our law. I need two or three. So let's hear about it. You sent unto John, and you have bear witness unto the truth. That's one witness. He said, John. He said, John the Baptist. He bear witness of the truth. He told y'all that someone coming by. I ain't even going to be able to take off his darn sandals. Keep going. But I receive not testimony from man. But these things I say that you might be saved. Mm-hmm. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Mm -hmm. But I have greater witness than that of John. Right? So he said, John, that's my first witness. But he said, you know what? I don't even receive testimony from no man. You know what I'm saying? But I say this for y'all benefit. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody y'all can trust. He's like, you know what I'm saying? He a, he a regular man. I ain't even, he don't even count for me. You know what I'm saying? But that's somebody y'all can trust. He said, I have greater witnesses than him, though. What else? For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me. He said the works, the miracles. He turns some water into some darn wine. Right? He walks on water. Right? He heals the sick. He raised people from the dead. Right? He said these things. He feed 5,000 people, 4,000 people. Right? He said these are the things that bear witness of who I am. He said those are my witnesses. What else? So that's two witnesses. You got John the Baptist. He got his miracles. What else? That the Father has sent me, 
and the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. He said, the Father himself. That's the third witness. He said, the Father himself has borne witness of him. How? Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Uh-huh. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him ye believe not. Okay. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye may you have eternal life. He said, the Father bears witness of him through the scriptures. He trying to let them know, search the scriptures, because in them, you think you had a promise of eternal life. But what happened? And they are they which testify of me. He said the whole time they were talking about me. We know what the scriptures are. Scripture is the Old Testament. He said the whole time they was talking about me. That's why we were able to look last week and look at Abraham. And we looked at Abraham's life and we saw how Abraham's life testified of the Messiah. We wouldn't see it. We wouldn't see it unless the Messiah revealed these things to us and told us. Unless the, the, the apostles that was that was in his stead here on earth wrote these things down and explained it and started to reveal it to us. Other than that, it ain't like we're about to pick up the book and read Abraham and be like, oh, look, that's Jesus. Ain't none of these Christians looking, hey, look, that's Jesus right there. You ain't seeing no darn Jesus because you don't know. So the book is opened up to you and the prophets reveal it to you and the, and the apostles reveal it to you. That's when you can look at it and you say, okay, now I understand what's going on. He says, search the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. But you know what? The whole time they're talking about me, talking about Yahushua. Right? The whole time they're talking about Yahushua. Right? So that's why we were able, that's where we uh, left off last week, Genesis uh, 21. That's why we left off last week. We looked at it. We said, Yahushua told the, the men in uh, John 8, we ain't got to grab it, but in John 8, we read it last week, how Yahushua told the, or it might have been 7, John 8, one of them. But uh, he, told, he told the people in Judah, he was looking like, Man, y'all ain't Abraham. I mean, y'all, uh, y'all think y'all Abraham see, but Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He was glad. Abraham was happy to see my day. Right? So that's what we want to look at. We want to look at when was Abraham happy to see a day. And then we end off last week at uh, Genesis 21, and we read how Abraham made a feast after Isaac was weaned. And I told y'all, I said, Isaac was Yahushua too. We showed y'all Abraham was Yahushua. Right? But Isaac was Yahushua too, and that's when he rejoiced to see his day. He was glad. He made a feast. So now we got to prove that out. This is uh, this Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. Zahar. Boy. This is Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. Oh, give me a water. Thank you. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Mm -hmm. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. All right, so the Most High God already promised to Sarah, whose name was Sarai in the past. He already promised to Sarah. He said, I'm going to give you a child. Right? They didn't believe him. They didn't believe the Most High God at first. Abraham did. But even he, at first, at first he had doubts. Right? And then he ended up actually giving her a child. Watch this. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah had bore to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. What day did Yahushua get circumcised? On the eighth day. That's a book. Book tell us we can read right now in the New Testament. It says Yahushua got circumcised on the eighth day. How else he going to do it? That's what happened to Isaac. Isaac is the first person in the book recorded that got separate second size on the eighth day. Let's see. Keep going. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Mm -hmm. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? Mm -hmm. For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Right. So what you do at a feast? That's a celebration. He was happy. He was glad. He saw his day. He was like, man, my son is weaned. Right? Look at Yahushua. He just weaned. This is the seed. All right, we still got to prove it. That's Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. <clears throat> 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 
For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by inter interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Uh-oh. Without... All right. So I'm taking y'all here for a reason. This is talking about Melchizedek. We didn't read about him last week. This is talking about Melchizedek. This is the king that Abraham met. Right? We didn't talk about him last week. We're about to talk about him now. Watch what he's saying. He said his name is saying first king of uh, righteousness and then king of peace because he's the king of a place called Salem. Salem means peace. Melchizedek means righteousness. Right? King of righteousness. Right? So he's saying his name means king of righteousness. Then his title is saying that he's the king of peace. Does that sound familiar? Right. So he's taking somebody that's in the scriptures that we could have read about last week and we wouldn't have saw none of this. But he's letting us know that this person is testifying to Yahushua. Watch. Keep going. To whom also. Oh, sorry. This yeah. is in the New Testament. In the New Testament, he's explaining this to us. There's no way anybody would have read this and just been like, you know what? That's talking about the Messiah. It has to be revealed to us. Watch. Watch this. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abides a priest continually. Right? He said, made like unto the Son of God, abides a priest continually. Because it testifies of Yahushua. When we read about Melchizedek. Do you think we get that? If we, uh, if we just, let's uh, go to uh, Genesis 14. We're just going to read the whole story right now. Let's see if we get that out of it. The only way we get it is because we, we, we read it in Hebrews or we had a teacher that opened it up to us, somebody that God gave it to or God gave it to us directly. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elasar, Cherolorimer, king of Elam, and title, king of nations, and title, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. Right, so you got about five kings on one side and about five kings on the other side, give or take. I don't know if I'm off on that number, but you got about five kings on each side, and they're going up war against one side, has Sodom and Gomorrah in it and a couple other nations that surround them, right? So they're about to go up against each other and go to war, right? Let's hear about what happens now. All these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Uh-huh. Twelve years they served Kedolomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedolomer and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephaims and the Ashtaroth. Kernaim, Kernaim, and the Zumims in Ham. Right. The Emims in Shiva, Kiriathim. Right. Some of those M's that we just read about. Some of those M's that we just read about, we're going to learn about later. We ain't going to get into it too much right now. But we're going to learn about how some of them M's that we just read about are actually descendants from the giants, the Nephilims. Right. The giants that uh, we didn't read it, but in Genesis chapter 6, it tells us there were giants in the land before and after the flood. Some of those that we just read about are descendants from those giants. Some of those end up being in the land of Canaan, in the land of Ammon, Ammon in the land of Moab. When we, when we go and Moses starts to take us into the land, and then Joshua has to take over, some of these people were mixed in, and they descendants from them giants. It's important that we know that. We'll go over that when we get back into them times. Keep going. And the Horites in the mounts, in their Mount Seir, unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness, Mm -hmm. And they returned and came to En Misfat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of, all the country of the Am Amalekites and also the Amorites that dwell in Hazar Tamar, mm -hmm. on Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adma and the king of Zeboim and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar, and they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim, with Kedolomer the king of Elam. And with Tidal, the king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of e Elaser, four kings with five. All right. So it, it sounds like it's four against five, right? 
So they went four against five, and then they end up going against each other. So they at the battle right now. Let's see what else happens. And the Vale of Siddam was full of slime, slime pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled into the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Right? So remember, what we, 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 I don't Abram. think we read it. But uh, it, last week when we were talking about Genesis and we saw that Lot came out with, uh, with uh, 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 Abraham, we saw, or we would have saw that they split up, right? So Abraham asked him, what part of the land you want? And then Lot chose. And the part that Lot chose was Sodom, right? He, he chose that area, right? So he went over there and he started to live in Sodom. So when this war broke out and Sodom was involved in this war, Lot was one of the people that ended up being kidnapped. He got, he got captured, right? Because Sodom failed. He was a citizen, pretty much, of Sodom. So then when Sodom failed, of course, he gets taken as a captive. All right, so let's see. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, Mamre the Amorite brother of Eshcol, and brother of Aner. Mm -hmm. And these were confederate with Abram. All right? So you had, you had these Canaanites that he dwelt with. They were confederate. In other words, they had an agreement with him. Right? Like, all right, we'll mess with you. You do something, we with you. Right? So they had confederate with him. So let's see what happens. When Abram heard that his brother, his brother was taken captive, he armed and trained servant. He armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. It's the real movie 300 right here. You read about the movie, it's one, 318 soldiers, all born in this house. So the people that he was confederate with, he said, I'm not counting them. This is just the one born in my house, right? These Hebrews, right? He said, okay, for sure. Armed them up, trained them up. He said, let's go to war, right? Watch this. And he divided himself against them, and he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. All right. So Abraham saved the day. He went out and he got all of them. He killed all them folks or at least chased them, the ones he couldn't kill. Right. 318 of his people. And he was confederate with two other guys who had their own soldiers. And they all went out there and they went out there and did some work. They brought all the captives back, got all the spoil back, right? Watch what happens next. And the king of Sodom went out, I mean, and the king, yeah, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedolomer and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shave, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a, the priest of the Most High God. Who? Melchizedek. Here he go. Right? All we read, Melchizedek. And he was a priest of the Most High God. Why? What happened next? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into your hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Right? So Abraham ended up giving him tithes. So tell me who would have read that without knowing what Hebrews told us. Who would have read that and would have been like, that's talking about the Messiah. There's no way. The only way you do it is if God give it to you, if he gives it to your teacher, or if you learned it from one of the apostles. Right? That's the only way. That's what we're looking at. When we go through this book, yeah, it looked like it's just talking about Isaac and him being weaned and then the most high God. I mean, I'm sorry. And then Abraham made a feast for his son. That's what it looked like. I'm telling you what really happened is Abraham was glad to see Yahushua's day, right? He rejoiced and he was glad to see Yahushua's day. Just like Melchizedek just looked like some king who was also the priest and he collect tithes. But at the same time, that was talking about Yahushua, right? Melchizedek was Yahushua, All right? So that's what we try to do. We try to look at it and we try to break down what we can find. It's Romans chapter 9. Let me show you how Yahushua is really Isaac. And Isaac is really Yahushua, I guess I should say.
verse what? One? Uh, give me verse one, yeah. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed for the Messiah, from the Messiah for my brethren. My kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving the law into the service of God and the promises. Right? He's saying, man, I want my brother to be saved. I'm looking out here. I see all these Hebrews, right? A.K.A. African-Americans, A.K.A. black people, whatever you want to call them. I see all these people out here. And I'm looking like, man, I want my people to be saved. I want my people to know who they are. I want them to serve God. But watch what he say. Whose are the fathers and of whom and, and of whom as concerned the flesh, the Messiah came who was over all. God mm -hmm. bless forever. Amen. He said, bless my people forever, amen. But watch what he said. Not as though the word of God has taken on effect. He said, but if they ain't saved, it ain't like the most high God didn't, didn't keep his promise. He said, it ain't like the word of God failed now if they don't end up. If all my brothers go to hell out there, right? All the Hebrews, all the Israelites, the true descendants of the Israelites. He said, if any of them go to hell or all of them end up going to hell, it's not as if the word didn't take effect now, right? Let's read. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Uh-oh. What does that mean? He said because just because they of Israel don't mean they of Israel. Right? That thing don't make a whole lot of sense. Sound like something Aristotle said. What's his name? Aristotle? Aristotle? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like something he said. To be or not to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's his name? The dude that said that. I don't know. Shakespeare? Shakespeare. You know what I'm saying? Sound like something Shakespeare said. You know what I'm saying? He like, just because they of Israel don't mean they of Israel. He'll break it down for you. Watch this. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Uh-oh. So now we're back to Abraham. Remember, we're talking about Isaac, right? So now he's saying he's trying to explain his point, right? We have to get the context of what's going on, and then we can extract from it what, what, what the point that we're uh, we making with the study, right? So the context of what's going on is he's trying to let people know, I love my brothers out there. Not all of them going to be saved, though. And even so, the word of God is still of effect. Just because y'all think they of Israel and they was born of Israel don't really mean they of Israel, though. You know what I'm saying? And so now we got to try to figure out what does he mean by that. So now he's trying to explain even Abraham. Watch, watch Abraham. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right? So he makes a point. He said just because they are children or seeds of Abraham or descendants of Abraham, doesn't mean that they're children of Abraham, right? And then he quotes scripture and says, see, in Isaac shall thy seed be called, right? Did Abraham only have one son? No. Abraham had multiple sons, right? But it, the book say, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Watch this. That is, they which are the children of the flesh... The heart, grab him. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Mm -hmm. for so he says, he said, the ones that are children of flesh, they're not the children of God. Right. When we talk about flesh, we're talking about people who give in to their natural desires and don't restrain themselves by the love of God. Right. You give in to your natural desires. That's considered the flesh. Right. You live by the flesh. Right. He said those are not the children of promise. Those are the, the children of promise are the ones who restrain themselves by the love of God in order to receive the promise that the Most High God offered to us, right? Keep going. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Right, so that's quoting scripture again. The Most High God promised Sarah. That's why when we read in uh, chapter 21, it said, Genesis chapter 21, it said that uh, the Most High God came and uh, gave her a child just like he said he would. Right, keep going. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, mm -hmm. for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand. Go back. We, did we miss something? Maybe Wait. I missed something. What verse is that? 11. Give me verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Uh-huh. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived. Give me verse 8. 
This is that which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. For the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that called. Right? So he's looking at the children, right? And now that you see the children that are born, two children born from the same source, but only one is elect. Only one is chosen. Only one is called. He's saying we have to be the children of the calling, right? So that's how we know that Isaac was the chosen, was the seed, right? And I thought it said that somewhere right there. I thought it said, uh, who is Christ? Maybe verse 7. Isaac, who is Christ? Or the, uh, the seed, who is Christ? Yeah, that's probably Galatians you're looking for. Right, Galatians I'm looking for? Well, oh, grab Galatians for me then. Well, grab, now, before we go there, grab Genesis 16. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and take it back. We'll, we'll just kind of take it back and look at the promise at least. Genesis 14. Yeah, Genesis 16. The Genesis chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to look at the promise. So remember, Abraham came on the scene at Genesis, well, technically Genesis 11. Uh, Most High God called him out Genesis 12. I think Genesis 13 is when they... Uh, well, I think I think they split up the land, him and Lot, Genesis 12, maybe. Um, then about Genesis 15 is when he, uh, he 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 gets his first promise. And then Genesis 16. Watch what happens. It's Genesis 16, verse one. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, bear him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. All right. So she he already promised her. A kid. He promised Abraham a kid, rather. Right? This is how the children of flesh end up coming about. Watch this. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Right? So Sarai was looking like, I'm too old to have kids. I'm barren. I've never had kids. I was young and I didn't even have kids. Right? So she said, I've never had kids. What makes God promise you a kid? What makes me think that that kid is going to actually come from me? That doesn't make sense. I'm your wife, sure, but the kid is not going to come from me, obviously, because I'm too old. So she's like, I got it. God promised you to have this kid. You need to have this kid. He promised a kid to you. Go ahead and go into my handmaid. Right? Go into my servant. She's the one who's going to have the kid. I own her. So technically, that's my kid. That's our kid at that point. Right? That's the logic she was using. Right. This is how you get a child of the flesh. Right. Because you get to moving too fast. God say something. You know, so you hear these people that think they they really they made some of them maybe maybe really hear God speak to them. Right. This I mean, let's just 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 say for argument's sake, some of these people really hear God speak to them. God just speak to them and be like. That new house going to be yours. Right. Because that's all. That's always the type of stuff that they hear. You know what I'm saying? That you're going to get that new job. Make it six figures. Right. So they hear it and they like. I got to make that happen. So they get to moving and moving too darn quick, doing type of shy and, and, and shady stuff just to make it happen. And then when it happens, that thing is not of God. Right? Because they cut corners. They started because they see the promise and they like, that's mine. Right? And instead of saying, that's mine that God going to give me, they going to say, I'm going to get that. Right? That's what they doing in the innocency of their heart. They don't know no better. They looking at it they like they ain't got all the information that we got. They got way more limited information. All this stuff haven't been revealed. We can look at them, look for their mistakes, and then we can learn from what their mistakes is and learn what's a sin and what's not a sin. Most High God hasn't revealed these things as sins to them yet. Right? So he's looking at it. She's like, okay, well, go ahead and do it. Go for it. Right? Let's see. Keep going. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Right? So he listened to his wife. She said, go ahead and go in. All right? Go ahead and go in. What's happening? And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to the husband, and gave her to husband Abram to be his wife. 
to her husband Abram to be his wife. Mm -hmm. And he went into he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon you. I have given my maid into your bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and you. And Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as it pleases you. And when Sarai dwelt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur, way mm -hmm. to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? And where will you go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply your seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, you are with child, and shall bear a son that shall call his name Ishmael. All right? So now the, the, the son of Hagar and Abraham, right? Still Abraham's son. His name was going to be called Ishmael. Right? Jump over to the next chapter. It's Genesis chapter 17. All right? So we saw that Sarah was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? This is how we're going to have to make this happen. Obviously, I'm too old. Go ahead and go into Hagar. I'll give her to you. And then now you can have a baby by her. She ends up conceiving. Then, you know what I'm saying, that jealousy starts to sit in. It's just like, yeah, man, I don't know what's going on. So they start to kind of fight with one another. Then Hagar was like, man, I'm out of here. So she just take off and leave. Most I got stop her. Like, listen, take your butt back. Go ahead. You're going to have this baby. Call a boy named Ishmael. Right? He said, I'm going to make a great nation of him too. Right? So let's see. This is, uh, this is uh, Genesis chapter 17. Jump down to verse 15. Just for time's sake. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall mm -hmm. her name be. So this is when her name changed. Remember, Abram's name, Abraham's name was Abram at first. And his name was changed to Abraham. And then he changed her name to Sarah. Right? From Sarai to Sarah. Right? Keep going. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. King of, kings of people shall be of her. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham fell, on, Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Right, sir. Abraham was like, man, that thing's silly. Remember, he already got Ishmael. He's like, that's crazy. I just, all I did is got older. I was, I mean, I was rolling dice getting the last one. He's like, you trying to tell me that me, I'm going to have a child. And then who else? And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? He said, do it make sense that she, being this old, is going to bear a child? He, he found that to be funny. He said, you know what? God, you sure got a sense of humor. He found that thing to be funny. That's why Isaac's name is Isaac. Isaac actually means laugh. Right? Because they both found it funny. They both laughed. At different times, they both laughed when they heard this promise. Right? They thought that thing was funny. So they ended up naming the child that. God told me his name going to be Isaac. Watch. Keep going. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Right? So Abraham was like, that's crazy. I already got a son. You, you did. You already fulfilled your promise. God, in his eyes, in Abraham's eyes, he's looking like, this is a miracle already. I'm old, and I have this son by Hagar. Right? Remember, you have to look at it from their point of view. Because we can look at it now. It's like, mm, yep, you're right. You're right. They just got to slow down when you hear something from God. But think about it from their point of view. The promise was given to who? Abraham. Not but, to Sarah, right? Yeah. It wasn't given to Sarah. So if you look at it, Sarah's like, well, I know my womb is shit. They both old. They both not supposed to be able to have kids. But it was given to Abraham. So Abraham's like, oh, I know I got something in the canon then. I'm good. Because God told me I'm good. So Abraham's like, he confident. He's like, let's do it. Sarah's like, mm, I know I'm not, though. He gave you that promise. My stuff shut down. We good. So why don't you go into Hagar? So he's like, all right, good. Because I was promised a son. Sarah didn't have nothing to do with it. He was like, I was promised a son. So he go into Hagar. He gets the son. So from his point of view, this is a miracle already. I'm too old to have a baby, and I just had a baby. Right? So he's like, man, are you already? God, you did it. Thank you. Right? You gave me a son. Thank good looking. Most like God telling them, nah. Right? Watch this. He said, but Ishmael, let Ishmael be before your face. Let's see. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. 
And God said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. That got with that. his seed after him. He didn't establish no covenant with Ishmael. That's why all these Muslims ain't in nothing. He didn't establish no covenant with him. He said, Isaac is go who's going to have a covenant. We got a covenant with y'all sure, don't we? Keep going. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Uh -huh. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. All right, he said, I'm going to make him great too. But let's, my, let's go back to Genesis 21. All right? So now you got Isaac and you got Ishmael. Both come from Abraham. Both of them come from Abraham, right? So one is a son and one not. That's what, that's what uh, Paul was trying to tell us in Romans. He's trying to explain to us, and just because they have Israel, don't make them all Israel. I mean, sure, they're, they're, they're of the seed of Abraham, but that don't necessarily make them children of Abraham, right? And that's because there's children of promise and there's the children of flesh. Isaac was a children of a child of promise, all right? Ishmael was a child of the flesh. This Genesis chapter 21 is where we started off, kind of. So Genesis chapter 21, verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Mm -hmm. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar. The so that was when the Most High God was looking. Most High God was looking, and he saw Abraham was like, I'm glad to see it. He rejoiced, and he was glad to see Yahushua's day right there. Now watch this. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, Abraham mocking. Mm -hmm. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. That got that. So after that, Sarah solidified it. She's like, let me just make something real clear. This boy ain't going to be no heir with my son. Isaac got the promise. God said it. Get this boy and that bomb woman out of my house. <laughs> right? So she had to leave. She told him to leave. That's what she was telling to Abraham. What do you think, Abraham? I mean, that's, think about it. This is technically Abraham's first son. The first son, he didn't even know he was able to have a son. Yeah, you think this is going to go over with Abraham? Like, woman, if you don't get out my darn face, get over it. You got your son. She got her. Be quiet. You the one. It was your idea. Let's just roll, right? Surely that's what was going through his head. Let's see what happened, though. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham. Oh, sorry. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Mm -hmm. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. He said that thing was grievous in his sight because of his son, because of Ishmael. He said that thing was grievous. That's my oldest boy. He said, that thing was real grievous in his heart because of his son. What happened? And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of your bondwoman. And all that Sarah has said unto you, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall your seed be called. He said, pay attention to everything your wife just said. Go for it. Do it. He said, listen to everything your wife just told you to do. Because in Isaac, the seed is going to be called. In Isaac, the seed is going to be called. That makes him a child of promise. The other child just got kicked out. That, that means he's cut off. He was no longer a child at that point. All right? He is no longer a child. Right? And that's the difference between the child of the promise and the child of the flesh. The child of the promise makes Isaac Yahushua. Right? He becomes the seed of the covenant. Right? Just like uh, when Yahushua went up, Satan got cast out. That's right. When Yahushua went up, Satan had to get his butt up out of there. That thing was done, right? I get up, but your boy got to get out of here. Both of them can't be there at the same time. It's the child of promise. How Satan going to be there? How the dragon going to be roaming around? Angels got his butt up out of there. They had to fight. Angels said, no, you got to get your butt up out of there. There was no, books say no, no place anymore found. I mean, there was no place anymore found for him there or something like that. Right? He had to go. That's it. Right? Go to Galatians. I think it's four.
4, 21. It's Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Is Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one a bond, one by a bondmaid, and the other by a free woman. Mm -hmm. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Mm -hmm. But he who was of the free woman was by promise. Mm -hmm. Talking about Isaac. Isaac was by promise. The bondwoman, talking about Ishmael, was of the flesh. Let's hear about it. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants. Mm -hmm. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. Mm-hmm. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is in the mother of which is the mother of us all. Right? Now who would have looked at this and got all that from that? Who would have looked at the story that we just read? We just read it. Who would have been like, you know what? This is talking about the current Jerusalem, which is in bondage to Rome, versus the child of promise, Yahushua, being married to Jerusalem above, right? The Jerusalem of heaven that's going to come down, right? He is like, this, this is just comparison of the two Jerusalem. Who would have looked at it and be like, you know what? That's what it's talking about. Nobody. You have to have an apostle reveal it to it. No way I can, I can start pulling this stuff out unless the apostle start revealing this stuff to me. And the most high God who gave it to them and the most high God who gave it to us. Right? Let's keep looking. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry that you travail not. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Mm -hmm. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecute, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. I got that. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Keep going. That's the last end of the chapter. That's the end? Mm -hmm. What verse is it in that? 31. All right, give me, uh, must be chapter 3 I want then. Give me chapter 3. Genesis 3. I mean, uh, Galatians 3, verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahushua the Messiah, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be put, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it, if it be Ah, confirmed. this is what I want. Yeah, this is what I want. He said, though it be but a man's covenant, what? Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds to it. Uh huh. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not, he said not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. He is talking about one seed. He said, I ain't talking about a whole bunch of seeds. He said, he said seed as of one. He said, I was talking about one guy. Let's see what guy he was talking about. And to your seed, which is Messiah. He said, which is who? The Messiah. That thing got to be the Messiah. So if, if the promise was given to Abraham and to his seed, which was talking about one, and only one child came from Abraham that was of the promise, I'm telling you, Abraham saw Isaac. And he said, man, I'm glad to see Yahushua today. He saw y'all, he saw y'all, he said, oh, make a feast. I'm glad to see his day. He was weaned. It was a celebration. Right? What else we got? 
And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before the God, before of God and the Messiah. You good there. Genesis chapter 21. I just want y'all to read it for yourself. Genesis chapter 21, verse 8. I just want everybody to see, see for themselves that Abraham saw Yahweh a day and he was glad. He rejoiced and he was glad. And the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Right. And then right after this, what, what did we just read right after this? What, after, what, what happens right after this? Sarah kicks out Hagar. The child of the flesh, you get your butt out of here. Only my boy. Everybody else, get away. Right? Only my boy. Right after this. Well, let's see if there was another feast where the same thing happened. Uh, Matthew chapter 26. Abraham made a feast for his boy when he was weaned. Let's see if the father made a feast for his son. <clears throat> it's Matthew chapter 26. Verse 1. Uh, no. Give me verse 17. Kind of want to go lower than that, but. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahushua, saying unto him, Where were you? Where do you wish that we prepare the, to eat the Passover? Right? So here go a feast now. This is a feast now. Let's see. This is a feast for Yahushua. Let's hear about it. And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Mm -hmm. And the disciples did as Yahushua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Mm -hmm. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dips his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Mm -hmm. Then Judah, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? Mm -hmm. He said unto him, You have said. And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Mm -hmm. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's right. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. All right? He said, Not until the kingdom come. I'm not, I ain't going to drink it until the kingdom come. All right? Watch what happened next. And when they had sung a hymn, they a, sung what? A hymn. So they ended up singing a hymn. They, they enjoy, I mean, that's a feast. That's a celebration. They rejoiced. Right? What else are you going to do when you rejoice? You got to sing a hymn. You got to start singing songs. He, he was rejoicing and glad, just like Abraham. When he saw Isaac was weaned, he was rejoicing. He was glad about that. So he made a feast. They was rejoicing and glad. What else happened? Then they went out into the Mount of Olives. They went where? To the Mount of Olives. Okay. Then Yahushua then said Yahushua unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. What night? This night. Same day. Same day. He said, y'all going to be offended. They going to smite the shepherd, and the, the sheep going to be what? Scattered. Your butt got to get away. Everybody got to get away. Everybody got to get away. What you think happened? Judah, the one that, you know what I'm saying, Judah is the one that, that, that betrayed him. He came up to him, marked him with a darn kiss. He made a deal with some of our people. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, y'all give me the money. You know what I'm saying? You know Judah in his mind, but he thinking, I've been walking with this man. It's the most righteous man I've ever been around my entire life. And y'all want to try to put this man in jail? And y'all going to give me money to, to snitch him out? No biggie. That's easy money. I'm going to get cashed out. He going to get set free because I know he ain't did nothing. You can imagine that's what Judah thinking. He looking like, man, I've been walking. He ain't never did nothing wrong. He's like, okay, y'all want to, y'all want to give me, y'all want to give me that much money just to, I kiss him on the cheek right now. Just so y'all can, I mean, just so y'all can go. 
He cash out. He take the money. He's like, okay, I'll show you where he is right now. Kiss him on the cheek like, hey. They came out. He's like, okay, that's him then. Because they didn't know who he was. It ain't like now. You got Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. You can see exactly who everybody is. Go look at their profile pictures. Go see what they did last week. You know, before you even meet people, you know what they look like. Back then, it wasn't like that. All you do is hear about it. You hear about y'all sure? Y'all sure? What he look like? He black. <laughs> we all black. You know what I'm saying? What that means? You know what I'm saying? So he got to. They got to point it out. They ain't never seen him. They ain't got no wanted posters, nothing like that. You just got to know who he is. So he went out there. You know what I'm saying? Kissed him on the cheek. Then they died. Okay, that's the one. All right. So they came out and they got y'all sure. So it was a. It was a little skirmish. Everybody ran. Y'all sure was left alone. Later on, Judas ended up killing himself because he saw that they were gonna put him to death. When he saw that they were gonna put him to death, he felt guilty. He said, "My hands." have innocent blood on him. He didn't expect for them to kill him, right? His expectation, they put him in jail, they're going to let him go. He obviously didn't expect it because he was looking like, once he saw they were going to kill him, he's like, what the heck? And he killed himself because he felt guilty about that, right? That's how these things happen. That's how decisions of the flesh can go wrong. He looking at it like, oh, that's all going to turn out right. But his motive was just getting money. That's what his motive was. That makes it a decision of the flesh. That's how the Most High God has set you up. Right? We look at these things. Yahushua got everybody off from around him. Just like Isaac. He had his feast. Right afterwards, get that bomb woman up out of here. And her son. Get they butt out of here. Everybody have to scatter. What else they going to do? He had to be Yahushua. Ain't no other way around it. Keep going. Let's see. Where we at? Matthew, what verse? We are, uh, 32. 32? Give me, uh, no, nah, give me, uh, Genesis. Give me Genesis chapter 25. A lot of people think Abraham only had Ishmael. He is the only one that had to get loose. Abraham has some more sons now. Let me tell y'all about them. It's Genesis chapter 25. Then Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Right? So this is after Sarah died. After Sarah died, Abraham got him another wife. Right? Let's hear what happened with Keturah and her son. And she bare him Zimran, and Jok Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begot Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, and Lethushim, and Lethumim. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Ephah, and Hanok, and Ab Abida and Elida, Elda, all these were the children of Keturah. So that's seven sons who also had sons. Right? Let's see what happens. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. He gave all he had unto who? Isaac. Uh oh. But he I gave everything he had unto Isaac. Sarah dead and gone. But remember when Sarah said something? She said, This boy will not be an heir with my son. And the Most High God said, listen to everything your wife just said. What you think, what you think Abraham was going to do? Well, technically, technically, she wasn't talking about these boys. She was just talking about Ishmael. No. When the Most High God tells him to listen to everything his wife said, Abraham do everything God said do. Everything God said do. He held on to that thing. He said, okay. But that's it. He gave everything he had. Nobody going to be an heir with Isaac. He gave everything he had to Isaac. And then after that, let's see what happens. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. He said while he was still alive, he said, all y'all get away from Isaac. He sent them away. Ain't that what it said? He had to scatter them. He had to scatter them. Because he had to be Yahushua. Isaac is Yahushua. He's in there, man. Oh, y'all get away from this boy. What you talking about? It's crazy. He's the promise. The covenant is with this boy. So he got them all out of Dodge. All right? That's the, that's the faith that Abraham had. To even, to even look. I mean, he was just a faithful person. And faith, all faith is, what is faith? Faith, all faith is, is obedience to the Most High God. That's all it is. You're looking at it and you believe what he's telling you. Therefore, you obey everything the man tells you to do. Right? Go to Hebrews. 
Hebrews 11, give me verse 8. We can sit here and run our mouth and we can criticize Abraham like, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? He uh he went into Hagar. You know what I'm saying? He went into Hagar and he, you know what I'm saying, he he had a he had Ishmael. We can run our mouth. God ain't never told him not to do that. God tell us not to do our foolishness. We got clear book saying don't do our foolishness. We ain't got no book saying God told Abraham not to do it. Everything, every, everything Abraham was told to do by God, he did it. And that's book. Right. We can't compare ourselves. You can call. Oh, well, you know, he tried to deceive people and say it was his sister. Book say it was his sister. Book say it was his sister. You ain't tell no lies now. Well, I mean, still, he was being deceptive and all of that. Book didn't say he couldn't do it. Anything the most high God told him to do, he did it, even to the point of giving up his first son, who he thought was a miracle. He's like, OK, well, you know, I can get him. You know, listen to everything your wife said. OK, well, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, Y'all got to go. What are you going to do? Most High God told him, let's do his wife. What are you going to do? He held on to that even after she was dead. Try to compare yourself to no darn Abraham. Abraham wasn't no darn sinner. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. These people, how you looking at Abraham like he is a darn sinner? Even Abraham made a mistake. Yeah, okay. He ain't disobeyed God, though. This man, you so disrespectful. Yo, but disobeyed God continuously and then proclaim out of your own darn mouth that it's impossible to stop you ain't no darn Abraham you lost your mind don't even compare yourself don't even put yourself in the same darn sentence talking about Abraham made a mistake you can do it too oh please you can't cut that stuff out you ain't even in the running with Abraham you ain't nowhere near Abraham that's our father this is Hebrews chapter 11 let's talk about the faith of Abraham by faith Abraham, when it's he chapter was, 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him to the same promise, of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang up there even of one in him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. All right. So we look at these things and we see the faith. The Bible recognizes the faith of Abraham. Right. And I'm telling you, faith just means that you do what the man say. Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse one. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Mm-hmm. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Mm-hmm. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go now, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. Mm-hmm. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you for unto you and unto your seed. Right. Of all these countries. Right. So this is the Most High God speaking to Isaac now. Right. Abraham dead. He's speaking to Isaac. He's like, man, go, go here. Don't go there. You know what I'm saying? If you go here, I'll look after you. Right? Why? Let's figure out why. And I will bless thee for unto you and unto your seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. He said, I'm going to end up performing the oath to you which I promised to Abraham your father. I told him that I was going to make a covenant and the covenant was going to be with your seed. Right? He said, that's what I, that's what I did. He said, I'm going to perform that with you. And I wonder why. Why does... Why is Isaac just so lucky? Let's hear about it. And I will make your seed multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto your seed all these countries, and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Because what? Abraham obeyed my voice. He obeyed his voice. And kept my charge. He kept his charge. My commandments. My commandments. My statutes. My statutes. And my laws. 
He said he obeyed all everything I told him to do. Because Abraham did that, I got you, Isaac. So Abraham did it. Who's the beneficiary? Isaac. That's called an inheritance. Right? When the one person, I mean, let's say I work. I work, I work real hard. Work real hard. Store up a whole lot, bunch of money. And then I die. But in my inheritance, I leave it. I just leave a will and I say, I want everything to go to Zahar. Whatever Zahar says afterwards, he can choose to share it, whatever he wants. But I want that decision to be with Zahar. You take Zakai, you get it butt up out of here. You get it butt up out of here. I want to go to Zahar, right? If that, if that happens, right, then who going to get it after I die? Zahar, right? Did he work for any of it? No, I did the work. And because of the work I did, my son benefits from it. That's called an inheritance. So now he is an heir. That's why Sarah was like, I don't want him to have no part of this. I don't want Ishmael to have no part of this. Because she knew what was going to happen. She want God to come to him. So now she came to Isaac. Right? Most High God came to Isaac. Most High God is like, okay, well, let's, let's deal with this. You know what I'm saying? Let me explain to you what's going on. If you do what I tell you, I'm going to stick, stick it to you just like I said I was going to give it to Abraham. Right? I'm a man of my word. Let's see. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, John chapter 15. That's why could nobody else be Messiah. They ain't keep the commandments. All of them fell short. It's John chapter 15. Give me, we'll, we'll have to start at one. Let's jump on down to verse nine. Is it Acts? John. John chapter 15, verse nine. Show y'all the importance of keeping the commandments. A lot of people, I mean, commandments, I mean, that's just rituals and laws and, and all that. See, God ain't about that. God just, he wants you to know him from the spirit. Mm -hmm. You running a whole lot of mouth. We just read in the Old Testament, he said, Isaac could get in this because Abraham kept all my law, statue, and commandments. Okay. That's the Old Testament, though. It's New Testament. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Uh-oh, this is John chapter 15. We're about to read into uh, verse 10. Continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Just like the man just told y'all. Just like the brother just told y'all. He said, because Yahushua kept his commandments, that's why he the only one that can be Yahushua. Don't make sense. He said... I kept the Father's commandments now. If you keep my commandments, you'll stay in my love. Just like I kept the Father's commandments. He said, I kept what the man told me to do. Man, come up here. He tell me to come to this place. I can't. Man, tell me to hang up on the cross. I'm going to hang. He tell me to get up. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to complain about oh, I'm, I'm still sleepy. I got my butt up on the third day. And not a minute late. What else he going to do? He said, I'm going to do what the man told me to do. That's it. Right? He said, if you keep my commandments, you'll be all right. Let's see. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you mm -hmm. and that your joy might be full. Let's this hear about how commandments is done away with. How God don't want that no more. Let's see. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. See, that's what it's about. It's just love. That's a commandment. It better be about love. That's a commandment. Let's keep reading. I mean, God just wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Okay, let's hear, how, let's hear how you get that personal relationship. Greater love has no man than this. I mean, how do you love a person the best? Let's hear about it, y'all. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The best love you can give a person if you give your life for him. Y'all did. Y'all sure did. Let's see. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. He said, you want a personal relationship with him? Do what I say. That's his words, not mine. A lot of these people will make up stuff and tell you, you just want a personal, you know, they don't never define it for you. They ain't going to tell you what a personal relationship. What is a personal relationship? Just ask them. What is a personal relationship? With you? I mean, you just have to feel them in your heart. Yeah, okay, that's indigestion. Right? You want to look at it. What is it? Tell me specifics. How do I know that this is not fake? How do I know? How can I separate what I'm doing from somebody who just has a good imagination right next to me? How do I know? Ask them the question. Ask for specifics. I bet you they can't answer them. They're going to give you a whole bunch of hoobla. Right? 
The book is very specific. He said, you want to know if you my friend or not? You want to know if you got a personal relationship or not? Do what I say. It's that simple. That don't feel all glorious to people, though. They don't like that. That thing too stringent. They like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that's the God I want to serve. That's all right. Don't serve him then. Don't trick yourself into thinking you're serving him, though. And you're serving a myth. Right? You're serving a darn myth. He said, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. We all know y'all should lay down his life, right? He's saying, if you keep my commandments, you my friend. So in other words, if you keep my commandments, you are a beneficiary of me laying down my life, which makes you the seed, which makes you a child of promise, which means you get the share in the inheritance that Yahushua has. The inheritance that Yahushua has from Abraham. Because he, he rejoiced to see his day. Right? He rejoiced to see it. This is, uh, this is uh, Genesis 18. Genesis 18, 16. We don't put enough importance on it. On keeping the commandments. We worried about all types of other stuff. Don't kill no time trying to learn the book. I know we go over, you know what I'm saying? We look at stuff, and there's a lot of people that that watch, and I appreciate y'all and all that, but it's not, it's not, it don't make no sense to know a whole bunch of stuff if you're not gonna obey. He just gonna make a fool out of you. Just going to make a fool out of you. It don't make no sense to know the whole Bible. You think you know the whole Bible. You don't know the whole thing if you don't obey it. You just know, you just know, I mean, you remember stuff very good. But you don't know the whole thing. You don't know God. It makes no sense. Don't even kill time. I'd rather obey the man and not know a lick of the Bible. Because he's going to reveal the book to me. That's his promise. If you, if you do what I say, we friends. What friends you got you don't know nothing about? Ain't your friend. Keep going. This is uh, Genesis 18, 16. Sorry. And the man rose up from there and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? He said, shall I hide from Abraham? Listen to the word. Listen, this is the most high God speaking. And just, just this is real life. Listen to the words that he's saying. He's asking himself a question. Should I hide what I'm going to do from Abraham? So this is the question that we have to assume that God is asking amongst people. Should I let people know or not this information? God is saying that. Should I hide this from them or not? Right? He's asking this question. What is it contingent on? What is the condition that's going to make God sway yes or no to that answer? Let's see. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Mm -hmm. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Mm -hmm. For I know him that he will command his children and his house after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because of their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. So we see the most High guy asked a question. Should I hide this from Abraham? Should I hide this from Abraham? I mean, seeing that, he going to be great. He going to do real good. And he going to command his children to obey and do justly. That's it. That's what it's contingent on. That's what God is thinking about. That's his factor. Should I hide this from you or not? Because I know you're going to do what I say. And you're going to teach people to do what I say. You want to be God's friend? Do what he say. You a friend? I'll let you in on a few things. That's all. Do what he say. He won't hide stuff from you. The book feel hidden from you? That's cool. We understand. It's hidden. Right? Book feel hidden. Right? It's, it's a lot of stuff we don't understand. That's okay. Most I got to break it down if you obey him. That's the missing link. Everybody trying to find, what's the secret? How do you do it? I mean, there's a formula. And sure, I got it. Obey the man. The most simple. That thing's not alluring to people, though. That thing is, that don't make people feel like, ooh. You got to obey him. It's like, oh, oh, that's, that's the key. Oh, okay. Moving on. Yeah, I bet. That's how you separate the real from the fake. That's how you separate the children of promise from the children of the flesh. A lot of people only looking at the Bible and all this stuff for the flesh. They ain't got nothing to do with God. This is Genesis chapter 22. Watch the obedience of Abraham. 
Most High God already knew he'd do. That was Genesis 18 we just read. Most High God knew it. Genesis 18, before Isaac even came into the picture, Most High God knew, I'm going to make him great. And the man going to teach his kids to do everything I told him to do. Right? Genesis what? This is Genesis chapter 22. Let's watch the faith of Abraham. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, which you love, and get you get thee into the land of Moriah. The land of where? Moriah. Uh-oh. The land of Moriah. All right. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon uh, one of the mountains, which I will tell of tell thee of. Mm -hmm. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. You hear no argument, no nothing. Most high God just told you, go up there, offer your son. Abraham just got up, start moving. No arguing, no nothing. No begging, no pleading. Who's that sound like? Yeah, sure. That's it. Let's go. Let's move. Let's hear about it. Let's see. Then on the third day, Abraham lift up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. All right. So he said, I see fire and I see wood. I don't see no lamb, though. <laughs> Most High God said, I mean, uh, uh, Abraham said, Most High God will provide himself a lamb. All right? That's the Most High God to tell him, Oh, don't worry about it. I'll provide the lamb. Watch this. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Mm -hmm. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He was about to kill his son. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have, with, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Mm -hmm. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. A uh, ram caught in a thicket by his horns. What are you going to do with this ram? And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Right? The ram is the one that got sacrificed. Right? That's just like Yahushua. Yahushua got sacrificed. Right? Yahushua is the one that was going to be sacrificed. And look at the ram. The ram was caught in the what? Thicket. By what? By his horns. What they put on top of Yahushua's head? Crown of thorns. That's what a thicket is. Just thorns. They just put the thorns right on top of his head. And you see the ram that was caught by his head on the thorns. Right? He got sacrificed on Mount Moriah. Moriah. Y'all may not know where that is, but watch this. This is a... Uh, Second Chronicles three. Second Chronicles chapter three, verse one. All right, he went up, and what? Did, what? Did, I mean, what did he have to carry up there? Did he have to carry some wood. Yeah. Oh, that sounds a lot familiar. Cause I mean, y'all sure. I mean, somebody had to help him carry some wood, right? Yeah, I mean, he was carrying that thing. That thing was heavy. They didn't beat his butt. He had to carry some darn wood, too. I'm trying to tell y'all, Abraham was glad to see his day. He rejoiced. He made a darn feast. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah. Mount what? Moriah. Same place. Where the Lord This appeared. was Jerusalem. Right? This is before Jerusalem actually came a place. But it's Jerusalem. Where did Yahushua get slaughtered at? Jerusalem. Right? In the place of, uh, place of uh, skulls, Galgatha. Right? We look at these things, all this stuff lines up. It's talking about Yahushua. You will never know it. I mean, you just read it and say Mount Moriah. How you know what Mount Moriah is? 
It ain't mentioned in the book, but only a few times. How you know what it is? You don't know until you read the book and you study it and you learn it. And then you say, all this thing is testifying to me. That's what the man is saying. He's saying this whole book is testifying to me. What you think you reading in here that ain't about me? Y'all sure is the temple. He's the temple. He's Isaac. He's the temple. He's Abraham. He's Noah. He's the ark. He's Adam. What you mean? What is the thing? What is he not? He's the spirit in the beginning. He's the word. What you, I mean, who, anything written in this book, we can make a case. Whole book testified. He said, search the scriptures. In them, you think you have eternal life. Whole time, they talking about y'all, sure. It's James chapter 2. We'll get up out of here. This James chapter 2, give me verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can mm -hmm. faith save him? A lot of y'all just running y'all mouth about faith. I mean, you your mouth said you got faith. He said, what is it profit? He said, what profit is it if you just running your mouth and saying you got faith? He said, is your faith going to save you if all you say is you, I mean, you say you got faith? You say you believe in God? You say you're a born-again believer? Right? You say you a good Christian? He said, oh, yeah, you run your mouth. He said, but is that going to profit you? Let's see. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? He said, man, y'all stuff is profitless. You sit here and y'all, I mean, look, you be warm, I mean, go in peace. You be warmed and you be filled. In the name of Jesus. I mean, just sitting there praying over somebody. I mean, you, you, I pray that God fulfills your, I mean, fills your belly with good food and that you were covered in all the hottest blankets. Yeah, you know I mean, saying a good prayer over these people and then send them away. But he said, but you don't give them what they need. He said, what profit is it? Let's see. Keep going. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man may say you have faith and I have works. Remember, he talking about the mouth. Your mouth might be running saying you have faith. And then he talking about, well, I have works. Let's hear about it. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. He said, you can run your mouth talking about you got faith, and you trying to explain it to me and all that. He said, me, I'm just going to show you by my works. This is what the book is talking about when it says the evidence of things unseen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. You can run your mouth about faith, but I can't see that. Right? Works can show you faith, though. You can see that. That's evidence. That's evidence of things unseen. Right? Keep going. He said, I'll show you my, he said, show me your faith uh, without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. He said, great. You believe one God. Sweet. Awesome. Good for you. Keep going. The devils also believe. And y'all don't even believe that. Y'all believe in darn three gods. Y'all ain't even, y'all ain't, y'all can't even get that far. Y'all believe in darn three gods. No, no, no. We believe that God is one God, three persons in one. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a trigonometry problem. Go ahead. Keep going. But the devils also believe and tremble. Mm hmm But will thou know, o vain man, that faith without works is dead? Mm -hmm. Was not Abraham our father justified justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up on the altar? Mm -hmm. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Faith was made perfect through Abraham. Why? Because he believed. And this will tell you. Keep going. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Right. That was in ch chapter fifteen of Genesis. Genesis chapter fifteen. It tell us that he believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, right? Then all the way to 22, this is what James is explaining to us. He's saying what he believed, that was his mouth talking. 
right? What he believed was fine. But throughout, he was consistent in proving it out. So by the time 22 came around, he was looking like, all right, don't even kill, don't even do it. Hold back. Now I know that you obey me. Right? He said he made his faith perfect through works, through what he do, does. Keep going. And he was called the friend of God. He was called what? The friend of God. Now, what did Yahushua tell us? Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his, own, for his friend. And he said, you are my friend if you keep my commandments. We see what Abraham did. We see the book said that he kept his commandments. Now James is letting us know he was called a friend of God. Whole time, I'm just trying to show y'all y'all sure so we can know him. We just need to know the man. We just, you want a personal relationship with him. Sweet. I ain't against no personal relationship with, with the most high God. That's what we're here for. But let's do it the way the books say do it. Let's not just imagine that we have a personal relationship and then he's telling me something, but he ain't told T that. Now, that don't make no sense. You got a personal relationship is because the same thing T being told, I'm doing. And the same thing I'm being told, T doing. That's it. We all being told the same thing and we all doing the same thing because we align under one God. That's it. Not no multiple gods, not under this wild stuff, not no Jesus, the, the son and, and, and the spirit, the Holy Spirit and, and God, the father, all three. No, 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 no. One God. And now we obey the man's son. That's it. And he is God. Andy Abraham. Right. Andy Isaac. Andy Noah. Andy Adam. Right. Andy the rock in the wilderness. Right. All these different things. We look at Andy New, New Jerusalem. He owed Jerusalem too. Andy the temple. Right? We're going to look at all these different things. We're going to look, look next week. Isaac got going to have two sons. I'm going to show y'all how he both of those sons. How he going to be both of them? I'll show you. He both of them. Right? At different times, he's going to be both of them. The whole book is talking about the man. He's talking about the man. That's what we have to do. We have to look into the book and we have to be able to realize that the whole thing is talking about Yahushua. And that's how we know him. We obey him, we see him, and we know him. That's our relationship. That's how we become friends with the Most High God. All right? Any questions or anything? T? Let's pray out. <laughs> <laughs>